Today, Slovenia is in yet another lockdown and I can't be exploring and showing you the country. I thought, why not at least introduce you to some interesting Slovenian food? These won't be like the types of dishes that are completely out of this world. There's definitely weirder dishes out there. However, these are the dishes that always kind of get an interesting response um, on my Instagram stories when I post about them. They're the kind of dishes that most other cultures um, normally don't eat, at least from my personal experience. So I thought it would make an interesting video. Let's just jump into the first one, which is spinach sauce. When I first posted this, my foreign friends went completely <laughs> mental. I know it looks like, I don't know, a green smoothie gone bad, but it's really delicious. I've been eating it all my life. It's a very like homey kind of dish for me. If you grew up in Slovenia, you'll know that your parents probably uh, told you you have to eat it to become stronger. Uh, but yeah, it is very delicious. We usually have it with mashed potatoes. And the kind of spinach we have in Slovenia is not like baby spinach that you would like eat in salads and get it from supermarket. It's this like really big leafy vegetable. Now, the next dish I'm gonna talk about is slightly controversial even in Slovenia, I found out recently. It's another sauce, I guess, that's also eaten with mashed potatoes usually. It's a warm cucumber sauce. And when I posted it, I was really surprised to find out that not even a lot of Slovenians know it um, or have like tried it or are just uh, disgusted by it. But again, it's one of those dishes that I find really homey. I love to eat it. I think it tastes amazing. You just have to, you know, give it a try. I know cucumbers usually belong to like salads and stuff, and you really wouldn't think that they would taste nice warmed up, but trust me, <laughs> okay? Third dish that's on the agenda for today is something that originates from my specific area that I come from. It's like a very small area with like a strong mining history, I guess. And I don't know if this dish exists even in other parts if people know about it and it's also a very heavy dish so I wouldn't recommend eating it a lot but it's called Granadier Marsh and it's basically pasta with potato with cracklings very very carb heavy <laughs> the way we make it is we boil the potatoes first with the skin on and then when they're cooked we peel the skin off and cut the potatoes in like very small pieces and we fry a little bit of onion on oil i feel like we do that with every single dish in slovenia and we add pork cracklings now when i make this dish myself i normally don't add them in but traditionally they definitely have to be there and then we add in the sliced potatoes and also pasta that's already been cooked um, usually we use macaroni um, or something along those lines and then we mix it all we let it cook for a few minutes and at the end also add parsley and that's a very carb heavy dish finished <laughs> and then for the last two i thought i would mention two more of a seasonal type of dishes because we only eat them um, during springtime because that's when the produce is, you know, in season. Us Slovenians go foraging quite a lot. We would pick different things from nature, like mushrooms, chestnut, dandelion, there's elderflower, like all those type of things. So yeah, for the fourth dish, I have the dandelion salad. Again, something that uh, foreigners kind of go like, huh, you eat dandelion? Um, but all Slovenians are obsessed with it. Like, it has to be on the menu every spring. I usually have it as a separate dish for like dinner. Sometimes you would also have it for lunch as a side dish. Now, just to be clear, we don't eat like the dandelion flowers, uh, we eat the greenery that grows before the dandelion flower appears, if that makes sense. We just pick the dandelion green from like a nearby countryside lawn, you know, we wash it, we cut it in very small pieces and there always need to be potatoes added in. So we need to cook uh, the peeled and sliced potatoes and my family also adds in eggs. I feel like most people do. So you also also need to boil some eggs and then you add the potatoes and the eggs into you know the dandelion greens a lot of people would also add in a lot of garlic not crushed garlic just like cutting little pieces I love garlic to cook with but I hate raw garlic 
and this is something that Slovenians always put in salads and I always like kind of have to pick it out. So if I'm making my own dandelion salad, I will skip the garlic, but most Slovenians claim that it has to be there. And the way my mom makes the salad is she also mashes the cooked potatoes and adds in warm water and then mixes it in. And then lastly, you also obviously add salt, um, a little bit of apple vinegar, a little bit of oil, and yeah, that's how you make a dandelion salad. <laughs> I do have to say that this salad is a little bit more like bittery than your usual salads, but it is full of iron and full of other vitamins and minerals. So yeah, it's actually really good for you. And then the last weird dish that we're gonna talk about today are elderflower pancakes i just love elderflower pancakes they're so nice like they're a little bit like salty oh i just love them we pick you know elderflower from the nearby countryside trees <laughs> it's really funny i always walk my dog at this like recreational area and every spring you would see people like coming to that hill with like bags and just like taking elderflower from all the nearby trees like everyone does it we pick it from the trees and we go home and we remove the florets from the stems and we wash the florets and then you just basically make a pancake mixture or like a crepe mixture um whichever you prefer i personally like crepes better like the thin ones the french ones as opposed to like the big fluffy american ones with this recipe so so yeah, you mix eggs, you mix milk, salt and flour until you get the right consistency and then you just put in the florets as well. And yeah, you just fry the dough the way you would fry it for your regular crepes, I guess, or pancakes. If you do want to make the American pancakes, obviously just go for like a thicker mixture, but yeah that's kind of it and it's delicious i really hope you enjoyed this video please 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 let me know if you've ever heard of these dishes before or if you've even tried them before if you're interested in more slovenian food videos i would love to do them i would love to do some live cooking or i guess not live cooking but you know filming me cook um, and show you how to make different recipes and also film some fun videos for you when you know the lockdown is over so i can actually go to to um, Ljubljana and film there for you because I can't really at the family house. It's just too busy all the time and the kitchen is a mess. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye! About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking.